Hi everyone, welcome back to another Julia language tutorial. Uh, we are building our image puzzle game and last time we saw how to launch the game and how to work with modules. Uh, today we will uh, see how to interact with the GUI. So we're using the image view function, the image view package uh, to view the images and it, this is actually built on top of GTK and reactive packages. Um, the important thing to understand about Imshow is that it's actually doing a lot for us under the under the, the, in the backstage, uh, creating all the window and all of its uh, components. Uh, and today we will look under the hood for the Imshow function and the GUI that it uh, returns back, uh, and see how we can um, use those components for our benefits and to use it uh, inside our code. So for the first thing, I think we can actually use the entire window. Uh, this is the ba basic uh, uh, um, interaction we can use. So maybe we want to know when the window is closed so you know that uh, the player gave up or maybe finished the game or something like this. So uh, first off, I'll add some packages we used. Uh, so we talked about GTK, we talked about Reactive, and finally it's we have GTK Reactive, which is some kind of um, combining of the two uh, we need to add the, load them to scope gtk reactive and gtk react gtk yeah so uh, a bit about gtk uh, gtk is actually uh, um, it's a cross cross platform uh, toolkit for building GUIs and uh, GTK is actually written in C. Uh, we are using the GTK JL package, uh, which is a wrapper or a binding, some kind of API to work with the GTK. Um, the main two components of GTK is the widgets and the uh, events. Widgets are the graphical objects we're, work we're work working on, stuff like uh, buttons, sliders, the canvas itself, um, and the events are some kind of signals coming out from the widgets. Um, and th the first thing, as we said, we want to connect uh, a type of a signal coming out from the window when it's get get uh, when it gets closed. So um, let's go to our code, and yeah, so let's go to our code, and we'll first we'll add the packages we are now using. And down to our main function, uh, we want to um, connect the signal. So we are using signal connect, which is a method coming out from a GTK package. And we want to connect the window. The window is under uh, the GUI dict, uh, under the GUI, uh, which is one of the uh, keys under the, the dictionary GUI dict. And there we have the window itself. Um, maybe I'll just want to, um, so I won't forget, I uh, want to return the GUI dict so we can actually see all of these, these properties. We'll see it in a second. So in under the REPL, so I'm returning the GUI dict and back to our function. So, um, I'm connecting the window with the uh, signal which specify when we destroy the window and using the Julia do syntax. So we're actually creating a function uh, um, uh, that will use the this widget. So we're signal connect uh, will use uh, th this function written right here. Um, and it's passing the widget as its argument. Uh, we won't use the widget for now, uh, but for other functionalities, you can use it. Uh, for now, we, all we do is we'll print that you closed the window. And we'll end the function. Uh, I'll re delete this one because we're not finishing anything right here. Uh, yeah, and I think we can fire it up. So um, let's go edit main. Yeah, 
and now when we'll close the window you can see that we've actually got back uh, um, this line of code was evaluated only when we closed the window uh, just to show you a bit more so uh, GUI dict is this dictionary and GUI is one of its first uh, um, keys uh, under GUI we can see uh, there's another six keys uh, the first one is window which is a GTK window leaf um, and next up we'll use the canvas we'll see it uh, in a few minutes so uh, this is basically the, the structure of the GUI dict so far um, excellent uh, we've actually noticed that we can get notification when we close the window just to remind you that previously uh, we hard coded three three seconds before we finish the code and we can actually delete this now uh, we, what we can do is we can wait that we will get notified that the window has got closed so I'll define a, a top uh, a level a variable called uh, is active and it's active uh, to begin with and while we're still active so this yeah we'll still wait for a second or something like this and when we will not be active anymore so we won't enter the while loop and the code is done only thing to do is we need to specify when we're not acti active anymore and we'll change it here so we now change the is active um, boolean uh, or state to be false and then when if we'll run it using um, if we'll run it using uh, script mode so when we close the window we can exit the program nice um, next objective for us is actually getting the position of the mouse cursor so we can uh, get the functionality to swap the blocks because we want to state like we want to swap this block with this block and we'll use the mouse to get those uh, type of things um, we will use uh, signals do not be confused with what we saw as uh, GDK signals uh, we're using reactive signals and reactive signals is actually uh, a value um, it's a time variant value so the signal uh, can hold any type of value um, and everyone who's looking at this signal will get notified when the variable has been changed so this is the the main uh, structure of signals and I think the, the most uh, usable is by creating uh, uh, derived signals derived signals is actually a mapping of this signal into another function the function will be evaluated every time the signal has is, is getting changed so we're looking on our mouse and wh what our mouse does so um, we look at our uh, GUI we saw there's a canvas object and let's just make it a pointer for some kind of shortcut um, I, I, actually what I'm doing now is uh, I know what I, my my goal is my goal is to get the mouse position so uh, the way I'm doing it is a I google it and search how can I do this and if I don't find the exact uh, solution for my question so I start tweaking for what I do have in my hands so uh, uh, you saw that the canvas is, is, is a complex type with all sort of things and I want to know what what actually canvas is so type of canvas it's a GTK reactive canvas and maybe I can specify what field um, canvas has so I'm taking the field name of this type answer is also always the last evaluated line in the REPL so field name of ANS will actually give me the field name of this type and I can see that under the canvas I have some the widget information the, the widget field the mouse and some preserved 
So mouse looks kind of promising. So maybe I want to check what mouse is and mouse is a mouse handler and what are the field of the mouse handler and I can see that actually I've got all sorts of fields maybe the button press and 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 the, uh, the motion and button release is it, it looks promising again uh, let me just um, let, let, let us check what actually mouse handler is so the mouse handler is a signal is, is a type with signal fields so all of these fields are signals uh, uh, for which you can map callback actions uh, and this is actually exactly what we are looking for so this is nice maybe let's look at the first signal which is uh, the button press so um, the type of button press and yeah you know it's a signal and the signal actually holds for a mouse button um, so let's check what mouse button may hold field names of mouse button and yeah we can see that we have the position the button and the click type we can also uh, again use the help to look at the mouse button and you can see that it's a type for holding information about the mouse button event um, the position the uh, integer identifying the button itself all sort of in, uh, the, this information and yeah this is this is nice this is a, exactly what we need uh, so we'll go back to our code and now we will add this mapping so we'll map uh, the GUI dict GUI canvas mouse and button press this is the uh, signal we want to map and we will map it again with the do syntax uh, we'll use button as the argument uh, passing to our function um, which is the button press and now we can specify that the row is uh, the button in position position at x and the column is button at position dot y and maybe we'll print it so we can uh, debug it a bit so you clicked at um, x is equal to row and y is equal to column with um, let's specify the type of the, the click so it's button and button. button yeah so this is the type that we clicked uh, there's also the click type which is uh, double click or all sorts of things less informative and yeah and we can end this function here let's see and uh, yeah it looks fine for me and let's call our new function so the GUI dict is main and yeah we can see that we clicked with some kind of minus value and with zero type so it, it looks a bit uh, awkward and if we click the uh, bottom left so you can see that now we clicked with some more realistic values the uh, left value was uh, um, 47 in in the rows and, and somehow somewhere around 200 uh, at the y and the click type is one so what is actually going on here is that a signal has an initial value uh, and for the button uh, uh, signal the value for the position is actually minus one y minus one so uh, we actually are deriving the 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 signal for the first time uh, with the minus values and the click type is zero because it's initial an, an, an initial value and then when we click it we can see that the click type has changed to one which is the left click and the values are more informative um, 
but still we are using some user user unit user unit is is a relative uh, indexing for the canvas rather than some other objects so this is exactly what we need the relative uh, um, position in the canvas this is the the x y coordinates of the image um, so we can do we can cast it to some kind of um, floating point integer and that uh, will get uh, not the user unit object but uh, this um, floating point integer and lastly we can um, define this mapping as a new uh, signal so let maybe let's call it chord uh, signal and it will be equal to this definition so this is the coordinate uh, of uh, um, maybe you can even return uh, row call and then the chord signal actually holds for um, the values here um, yeah another thing we can uh, do is actually this is our main functionality of the game uh, and what we want to define next is what to do in each situation when the user clicks the the, the mouse so maybe uh, if first click so this is uh, the first marking of, of a tile so we want to print uh, maybe let's say we need to highlight the selected block And if it's not the first click, meaning this is the second click and we want to swap the blocks. Uh, swap. So actually we don't want to print those lines. It's, it's only a, a helper for us to define what we need to uh, do here, what we need to add in the code. Uh, and we need to specify the, the, the first click. So um, maybe we'll give it uh, again in the top uh, level code we can define the first click variable and maybe just assign it to false so now we can change the first click value to what we want and uh, this will uh, impact the functionality of our code so if we'll run the function again uh, and you can see that it tells me that I need to swap the blocks because this is what I set for when the first click is false and every time I will click the button so I will get what I want to do um, yeah so I think I think this covers the basic interaction with our game and actually all we need to do next time is write the exact functionality for the um, highlight and swap the blocks and this is what we'll do next time hope you enjoyed please comment below let me know your likes and dislikes and i'll see you again next time thank you very much